Christian, we're not talking about salvation. Can we make that very plain? You see, my friend, if you take this context and put it in the context of salvation, you'll never get spiritual victory. And I hear all kind of preaching that takes problems that Christians have and blames God. You know, that's what happens when we say, well, you know what, if this is... It, I'd be spiritually minded if I was a new creature in Christ Jesus. But what happened was, I, evidently, I didn't get saved. I wanted God to save me. I asked Him to, but He didn't save me. And so, um, you know whose fault that is? If you want to be saved and God didn't save you, my friend, it's His fault. And you can blame Him for your sin. Go ahead. I, I, I'm being sarcastic, but I mean that's a fact. It really is. If, if you wanted God to save you so that you could be a new creature and you wanted Him to just make you over new so you didn't have sinful desires and didn't live for sinful flesh, and then He didn't do it, then He offered you something that He did. He extended you an offer for salvation and, and he, he didn't give it to you. And I want to just say to you that He's evil. If that's God, it's not God, He's not evil. But if that's what you think, my friend, you'll never get spiritual victory. And I'm telling you what people blame on God hinders spiritual victory. A lot of preaching does that. Much preaching says, if you're doing this and this and this, I wonder how you can be saved. No, my friend, I wonder how you can be fulfilling the righteousness of Jesus Christ if you're living in sin. That's the correct statement, isn't it? If you're doing this and this and this, I wonder how you can be serving the Lord. Could you? The answer is no. If you're living for the flesh, you're not living for God. And they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Do you feel condemned? Or do you feel as though your life is a fulfilling of Jesus Christ? I'm not today preaching feelings. But feelings are reality, aren't they? And how do you... Condemnation is something that we feel. That's a fact. It's a fact. Condemnation is, but it's a fact that we feel. And if you're condemned, you say, I feel condemned, my friend, not by Christ's righteousness. Christ's righteousness doesn't condemn. Christ's righteousness enables us to fulfill God's law in a way that keeps the law from being able to condemn. And if you're saved today, can I say to you that God's plan in the person of Jesus Christ on the cross is for you to be free to righteousness? God's plan for you is liberty. Not to use liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but my friend, His plan for you is for you to live righteousness. Free from sin. Free from the condemnation of the law. And that's what God wants you to have. And my question to you is, is that what you're living today? We see the diagnostic, hey, you, you live for the flesh. If you love the flesh, then the things of the flesh, you're going to mind those things. They're going to matter to you. Do the things of this world matter to you? Or the things of Christ in eternity matter to you? What matters? It's a good diagnostic. It'll help you know where you're at. Let God's Word do what He wants to do in your heart. Convict you. And encourage you. Convict you that if you're condemned by God's law, that it's because of sin. And you need to take care of your sin. Encourage you that if you are living for Christ and you're following God's Spirit, as we would have seen if we'd finished this passage of Scripture, that you're free unto righteousness and you're experiencing liberty.